You know, I wanted to start this off with a, a nice quote from uh, one of my favorite wrestlers, but I see a lot of people have been doing that already yeah. this week. But uh, we'll uh, get into it. Oh, sorry, that was when I put the poll in the chat for y'all, so you got a little reverb there, my bad. Um, but like I said, I wanted to start this off with a nice quote from one of my favorite wrestlers. And uh, we can't do that this week because everyone else seems to be doing quotes from them. And then when you call them out for it, nah. It's not a big deal. No. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What do you want to talk about? Oh. WWE Fastlane is in the books. We got a lot to recap with that. We have rumors. We have confirmed breaking news that I just put up a picture for. So all that is going to be happening, all that and more, right now here on Clash of the Podcast. And... uh Two things, two things. I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Number one, we're late because of me. Conrad, love you, bruh. But let's do it now. Conrad, drop that thing. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, this is Clash of the Podcast, where everything pro wrestling and Hubbard Wrestling Weekly clash together to talk all of these topics in pro wrestling. You may get something about WWE, AEW, Impact, MLW, if they're making some noise. NWA's got territories coming back. Maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, could be many a plethora of things. So make sure you guys are locked in with us. Uh, Sean's YouTube channel is in the description below. Make sure you guys show love to that channel. He talks about combat sports, boxing, UFC, pro wrestling, you name it, he's got it. Um, before we get into tonight's show, a little bit of a programming note for next week. Sean took the heat for today because he had to deal with something. I have to deal with something next week, which are these beautiful teeth of mine. So go. I got to make sure that uh, I have to go to the dentist and I will try to reschedule next time so that the dentistry time is a little different because Clash of the Podcast was not in into my workings for when I made these that, last two. Who the heck does that dentist think he is? Who does he think yeah. he is? They drill grills, baby. DDS. <laughs> mm, you know how they get down. So, Sean, welcome in. Uh, lots to talk about in this entire week of wrestling. And I know you guys left a bunch of comments. I will try to get to those as well. But first you, Sean. Yeah, man, really happy to be here. Um, crazy day at work that's built all the way up until the day, uh, up until right now, which is why I'm late. But I'm so thankful to be here. Um, a little bit late, but we continue the streak, man. We're continuing the streak. We have not missed a week since our inception, and I'm really excited about that. We will not be missing a week next week either. We're going to start a little bit late next week, but really fired up about everything that's going on in the world of professional wrestling. A little bit of concern about my boy Jay Uso, even though he's a new world tag team champion. And no, I'm not concerned about him having a nice little drink before the press conference. I'm not talking about that allegedly having a drink before the press conference. That's the rumor. I can't say for sure he had a drink before the press conference, but he definitely came across a little inebriated, but we don't know that for sure. None of us were there. Um, but yeah, what's going what's gonna to happen as far as him kind of maybe riding in the shadow of Cody Rose? Will that dim his light a little bit? How do we feel about that? How do we feel about the, the new storylines that are coming up? How do we feel about Roman Reigns being off the scene for so long? There's a lot to talk about, Conrad. Let's get into it. Uh, Joel in the house says he's ready to go. Sir Quills came in. He said, what a dudo. Conrad, Sean, chat. Sir Quills is back again for my favorite part of the Monday. My two favorite bros in the podcast game clash of the podcast. He continues with saying it's episode 58. Shout out to Sean and his classic New York Giants. It is the Carl Banks episode of The Clash. Let's get into it. Quilly is my guy, man. Shout out to my guy, Quilly. Shout out. And I, I never, I got to do it in advance now. My guy, Derek. My guy, Derek. Derek, don't feel like I'm turning on you, brother. You're my guy, but I got to give Quilly a shout out to. No, Derek, I'm turning on you. <laughs> Be on time and do what you say you're going to do. Wow. All right. <laughs> Doug, I got to give Derek a hard time. Doug, he puts Monday, Monday, Monday. Oh, wait, I messed up. I didn't read the first part. Monster Truck announcer voice, Monday, Monday, Monday. It's that time again for the class. That was, good. Huh? that was good. 
I watch way too much pro wrestling and I've seen way too many monster truck ads. What? That's the problem. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you are in here, Doug. Uh, Guy will gamble in here. What up, everybody? Funny thing. I thought I was in uh, with the first with the funny line, but it was in the link for tomorrow. I guess I'll read it tomorrow. Guy will gamble for uh, we're doing our dynamite review tomorrow as well for those interested. So maybe if you can't check out the Wednesdays, come over for Title Tuesday. We are going to review Dynamite instead of NXT, but we might even talk a little NXT. We're going to talk about that here tonight, too. That's so awesome. you'll enjoy that. Uh, let me see who I missed. B-Boy Skyline said Tony Khan paid Jacksonville to win yesterday. He paid off the refs. I don't want to get into the uh, what I think happened um, with that game, but I'll, I'll keep it to myself. How how you feeling? Your quarterback's out, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't wish I'll just I'm saying this as nicely as I possibly can. I don't wish injury on anyone. But I'm very happy about Tyrod Taylor. Let's just put it that way. I don't I wish uh, yeah, thank you. I wish he wasn't in the game. I wish that what's his name? I'm forgetting his name. Daniel Jones wasn't Daniel Jones. A but I but I don't wish any injury upon the young fella. I just he's just not a good quarterback. That's all it is. Let me let me say this. Um Tyrod Taylor. Forty million dollars for this guy. Hey, hey, you gotta pay the cost to be the boss. You get that first round draft pick QB, you get in some bread, baby. Automatically. Um, listen, some people think it's crazy that Geno Smith's getting paid when he's getting paid for the Seahawks, even, but Tyrod Taylor and Daniel Jones are similar quarterbacks to me. Me and my friends, I'll never forget, we were playing basketball. It was after we had just lost, like, a league game. We lost most of them, most of them to be honest. Uh, we were playing with some really good cats, though, and we were just sitting there talking about it. Someone was trying to tell me that Tyrod Taylor should be our franchise quarterback, and I said no because I don't think he could throw the ball as far as we need him to. I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a good person. I have no issues with Tyrod with that stuff, but – I think that him getting into the game when you need him to get that long ball, he can't do it. That's not going to get you to the play. That's not going to get you deep into the playoffs, I should say. But he was the quarterback that got us to break the the treacherous, we can't make the playoffs feeling. He's your Mark Jackson. Mm. Mark, Mark Jackson of the Golden State Warriors, he got them to the doorstep, and then unfortunately he didn't get the rings because Steve Kerr got off the glory. Well, well, some people say Mark Jackson's really the brilliant one behind the Golden State yes, Warriors. Yes, he is. He is. Ray Thompson says, happy Monday, everyone. Almost time for uh, the Tuesday Night Wars, LOL. And Guy Will Gamble yelled at me saying I needed to put a thumbs in the middle option for the poll. I could not. The final results were 90% of you said that it was a good show. Somebody somebody definitely put it 91, then it went back to 90. I don't know who that was, but I saw you do that. M. Leezy Fo Sheezy says, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Wonderful way to start the best pro wrestling podcast in the game. Thank you, ML. And also for your shout-outs, your very thoughtful shout-outs on Fridays on Twitter. We appreciate you, man. Follow my boy M. Leezy Fo Sheezy on Twitter, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Now, they shout were out so to cool. my boy Jay Uso, he's the champion again. He just needs to chill a little bit on the press conferences. <sighs> well, I'll save my point. My brother, don't get in trouble, please, please don't get in. I mean, they made like it was a light thing, and Cody definitely took some of the heat off of him. So thank God for that. Right, McKinney says, "Yo, I'm here to talk wrestling. Tell everyone, yeet." <laughs> yeah. like, uh, Fastlane was good. Happy to see Carlito return full time. Vinny says, hey, guys, uh, sending my love as always. My Steelers got it. the dub. Life is good. God is good. God bless y'all. Thank you. Back God at God bless you too, Vinny. The only Vinny I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe my I refer to him as Gomez. <laughs> my guy. Eric. What up, D? Oh, Eric in the chat as well. Eric Douglas, let's give Cody and Jay a little bubbly before the press conference. Sounds like a good idea. You know what that means. Facts, Eric. By the way, Eric, every time somebody says our quote, it really brings a smile to my face. So thank you for that, man. I think I think that you know what that means. It's kind of sexy, man. I think it's kind of a fun thing, man. It's fun. I, th I think I think that is the phrase of the sh podcast. Usually, yeah. I hear that the most. Let's go. Even though Yeet might bring in some competition. Yeet. <laughs> 
<laughs> Renegade L2K says, uh, how about the Jaguars, Team AEW? Yeah, y'all keep playing in England. That's where that team's going to wind up. Uh, let's see here. BJ also in the house. What's good? You want to talk ugly games? The Jets and Broncos, even the commentators were talking trash on that game. They were. They were. Yes. Uh, until the Bills win their next game, everything AEW related is getting the middle finger. Yeah, I'm in my feelings about it. Come on, Rob. It's all right. Easy E in the chat. What's good? What's good? Easy E, what up? My guy, Derek. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> uh, Connor in the house. What's going on, brother? Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Uh, who is this? This is Cray. What up, Clash? Steelers won, and sadly, seems like AEW is struggling. What is good, brother? Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's get it. Let's get into this. Let's get yeah, into man, let's have some fun, man. I started us off all late and everything. We got to pick up the pace, brother. We'll be moving in this. So first, we got to look at Jay Cargill, who arrived at Fastlane to be greeted by Triple H. She came in like she was ready to wrestle. She was looking like it was time. <laughs> she was coming like it was time. I guess I have to be Cody with the, <laughs> with the dog barking. I mean, Jade. Um, I, I don't really. I don't know what else to say. She is presented like a star. Look, she looks like a star. This is what you do. Yeah, but it's stupid. I mean, it's stupid to show up in wrestling gear when you're just going to show up during the pre-show for 10 seconds. That's weird. I mean, you can say the same thing when they take these photos, but yeah, it got yeah. people talking. It got, I can't say anything bad. Good point. It got people talking. Um, what do you think the future holds for, for Jay Cargill? Did you like that appearance in there? I, I thought it was unnecessary, but I get it. It's cool. I, I'm standing on what I said the whole time, Conrad. I'm not changing until they prove me wrong. I think Jade going to WWE is the biggest mistake of her career. I've said it. I've stood on it. I've TikTok about it. I will not change. And I and I'm let, let me go on record, Conrad. My brother from another mother. I'm going on serious record right here. I hope I'm wrong. I love Jade Cargill. I love Mercedes Monet. They're the two hottest, and I mean that in a talent-wise, professional wrestlers that are females in the world. I hope I'm wrong, but I am not happy she's in WWE because WWE does not do well with free agents. I don't care what anybody says, bro, but I hope I'm wrong. Can't can't mess up these free agents is what Conrad will still stand by. Mm -hmm. Pro Wrestler Shoot in the house says, what up? What's going on, Pro Wrestler Shoot? Got some good combos. I just made that up. That was good. PW Sizzle. I like that. PW Sizzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Out of nowhere. Jay, Jay Cargo coming in hot like a straight up superhero has to. Mm. She's gonna get the angle uh 2000 Lesnar 02 type of push, Vinny says. I hope you're right, Vinny. I hope you're right. I hope they don't, I hope they don't uh Bobby Rude this. Let's start off with the opening contest here. We had oh, Senior man. Money in the Bank and Finn Balor. Uh they took on the tag team of Cody Rhodes and uh Jay Uso. It's just me, oops. <laughs> One ish. Cody, Cody and Jay uh, did some good stuff in this. The real story, though, was Judgment Day. First off, where did they get all these purple twelves from? Is everybody in Judgment Day rocking the purple twelves? That's that's, where, that's pretty exclusive shoe. I agree. Where, where do you get these? Where, you just special ordering them, getting them made? Are they the real Jordans, Rob? I'm gonna need you to look into that for me. But the money in the bank ends up crumbling priest down on the announce table he actually ate a nasty crossroads off of there as well yeah. um you know cody at one time did mention on aew that you know there's people botching the crossroads mm -hmm. and that used to be priest finisher i'm just pointing it out so cody caught him with one and i actually like the 1d but they did cody bouncing off the ropes mm -hmm. to catch him in the Mm -hmm. I'm not going to – I was kind of feeling it a little bit. They kind of got me into it at the end of this where I was like, okay. They gave them the belts. It feels weird to see Jay without Jimmy with the title. It, it kind of – that's like a knife twist into yeah. the heart a little bit. But Those never should have broke up. But go ahead. Yeah. I agree. But in the end, we got what we wanted here. Uh, new tag champs. Sean did predict this. He was – 
Oh, so close. do I give you? Do I give you half credit? You or gotta, you gotta give me half because the second part didn't come true. I was so close, and I mean close because they teased it at the end of the show. I was so close. You can tell them what my prediction was. Sean, so this was a private message. Sean said that Cody and Jay were winning the titles. This was the moment they announced that they were going to start teaming. Yep. He said they're going to win the titles, and Priest is going to cash in and become world heavyweight champion. Oh. But that knee shot to Priest will come back later to haunt them because that is what prevented him from cashing in because they said he was too weak to do it. I mean, it's smart. You wouldn't want to go out there and try to cash in if you're hurt too. Like, he could beat you. So... Well, it all I know is Jay Uso has gold around his waist again. I just, I just, should we segue? No, we'll talk about my. No, no segue into it. I want to segue into this now a little bit with the Cody and Jay thing because you said you have an issue yeah. a little bit. I, with, I, have, I, an I have an issue. I, I think, you know, we all know Jay's over like Rover right now, but it's, it's tough when you have Rock come out with Austin as your partner. You know what I'm saying? It, it was always one of those things where Rock would come out and it'd be a massive ovation, but then Stone Cold would come out and it would be a monumental ovation. It's like, and my question is to the chat, is Jay with Cody dimming Jay's light a little bit? I mean, Jay is still super over, but when you have, I'm saying it with an eye roll for the people listening on audio, the hottest wrestler on Monday Night Raw as your partner, does that kind of take away from Jay Uso's shine? I'm a little concerned about that. Conrad, what say you? I don't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Cody even, so this is the whole, what's your story? Who would have predicted Cody wins a title here? Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. That's all noise right now. Because I think Cody doesn't know what they're doing, especially getting into this WrestleMania season. Right. Um, I Now... There are two ways that I view this press conference because I saw, uh, hold on, who had it? Pro Wrestling Shoot brought up the press conference after the show. Everyone thinks it's funny currently in that state. I mean, that's fine. But I think this also lends credence, though, Sean, to what we were talking about months ago with why don't they put the title on Jay Uso? I think the blow was lessened, like you said, that Cody was there. Cody said they had libations, all right? That's that's a right. nice word for they right. had a couple drinks. Cody, Cody, if there was any kind of rumor, Conrad, if there was any kind of rumor after that um, after that press conference about Jay drinking on the job, if Cody had not said, hey, we had a couple of libations on the bus, it would have been a lot worse. Correct. So Correct. So, but I think a lot of people are taking this as they were the best part of the press conference because I thought the press conference came off kind of weak mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. parts of it. Like John Cena gave you a detailed explanation as to why Hollywood folks who cross over can't come back to wrestling, which I thought was acceptable. Mm -hmm. He gave you an insight into the insurance claims and then that other people could lose their jobs if you get hurt doing this. So understood why why don't you come back all the time it explains the rock batista all of them mm -hmm. and we'll get into their matches momentarily but i think that jay uso being up there and drinking see here's the weird thing though like if they did that how does it not hurt cody but it hurts jay because in my mind i'm like this is why you can't give jay the time you know what i mean i, know, like, that's what I'm saying. I think jay, now your point would be totally valid if cody didn't say what he said Cody but, said what he said totally alleviates Jay Uso. Oh no, it's but yeah. I guess we're talking about the double standard in pro oh, wrestling. Sure. For people. If Cody came out there, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and, and if, Jay was chilling, if it was Jimmy and Jay and they said the exact same thing, this would be ten times worse. If it was Jimmy and Jay, it would be a problem. Correct. That I can't believe you think this is funny. Ha ha ha. But since it was Cody and you know they're up there just yeah, they were having fun. Uh to me, the funniest part was asking him a question and he just paused for a second. I'm sorry, Hunter. And Cody's laughing hysterically because you could tell that like all the media training was gone out of their heads at that moment. Right. But I will say this to Jay Uso, who's I'm gonna say, I'm gonna speak it into existence to Jay Uso, who's listening right now. Don't do that no more, bro. Just, just, just don't. We don't need you to have anything in your system that is not anything good. We, uh, like, I, 
I've been defending this guy since day one, and you said that his situations outside the ring, which have been laced in alcohol, is the issue. We don't need him coming. Cody saved him. Cody saved him this time. I just like listen, to... Cody. Cody. Cody took out the pepper and salt, yeah. and he seasoned it up. Don't do that again, though. Don't Please be careful. Don't do it again because all that joking that uh, that Ric Flair that um that Triple H did, it wouldn't have went down like that. And you know what? There's a drinking story with him too from a comedy show this week. But I'm not even going to bring that up this week. But be careful, y'all, with the alcohol and when you're on the microphone and in public. Uh, McKinney has a comment about Jade that I'll bring up. Jade debuts on Raw for a Becky Lynch NXT Open Challenge, goes to NXT, matches about six contenders, then move her to the main roster in my Tommaso voice. NXT is the main roster. We'll see. Uh, We won. Get Vince McMahon out of (laughs) here. We'll talk about that momentarily, Tokyo. Welcome. Uh, Rob says they are real. They are field purple 12s. Okay. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> mid card Cody Rhodes here we go wrestling Twitter never fails with this uh I'm wondering if Jay will turn on Cody Steve Kelly good point welcome to the chat as well Steve we were just talking beforehand um I don't know what do you think Sean do you think is <sighs> I can see the Jay and Jimmy match and they need to buy time for that if it's going to happen at Mania but I also saw you remember what I was saying like mm, is this the ultimate setup I hope not Ooh. I'm going to say something that really bothers me, that really bothers me to admit. You know, they've screwed up the storyline so bad. Jay's definitely turning on Cody. And it, and it's really sad because that's, what's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Jay's going to fall back in line. And this whole thing, like, and I'm, and I'm not going to take credit for this. I have to give it to my tag team partner. And I'm going to use his exact words. This whole three and a half years now, will have all been for nothing. They're, Jay's, Jay's going to rejoin the, 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 the bloodline. Because him and, first of all, him and Cody being tag champions does look weird. I never said it didn't. I just thought it would be a cool idea to finally do something different, which I'm very surprised that WWE did. WWE actually pulled the trigger on something different. Wow, somebody must be using their head for a change. But knowing WWE, they'll have a rematch tonight and the Judgment Day will win it right back. You know, something stupid like that. But Jay's definitely turning on Cody. How can how in real life could Cody and Jay ever get along after everything? This that makes no sense. Drew McIntyre's a baby face, y'all. You better start listening to Drew. He is tight. Yo, Drew has been making the most sense. First of all, first of all, <laughs> dummy. you you guys are first of all and, and talking to the fans and talking to me. You're cheering for this guy? This guy has been the bane of this entire company's existence with his big cousin for three years. Now, all of a sudden, he says, yeah, and everything's okay? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> McKinney's got a good one here. And Pro Wrestling Shoot agrees about Jay turning with us uh, that he had just brought it up, too. McKinney says Cody shouldn't have any belts until Roman. Uh, that makes for the hard times promo because the WWE title is the mountaintop that finishes the story. Eh, it still finishes the story if he wins the title. The, I hear what McKinney's saying, but it, it still, it doesn't matter. It's a chapter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's very random, but I figured I'd share a laugh. Stokely tweeted Ethan Page texted him to call 281-330-8004. Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. You know, that's a big boy anthem right there. Gotta be. Gotta be. Uh, He has a few brews. (laughs) You never know. You never know. Um, WWE has done more to promote Jay than AEW did in two years. Hold on now. Now, I got to pump the brakes on this comment, Eric. That is not true. If Tony Khan lets you go undefeated for as long as she did, she she was built perfectly. The problem is he built her right in the WWE's arms is the only issue I have with the whole thing. Even when she lost the title, she won a match right before yeah, to make to say, protect her. The AEW didn't put the machine behind her. They definitely they wanted her. Tony Khan actually said on that Wrestle Dream Media Scrum that he offered her more money than her asking price. How much will it take to keep you? I want this much. He said I was over the amount, and she still decided to go. So that's that's her perception of no matter what he offered, she had that idea in her mind anyway. So you know, there was nothing he could do. 
he, if, he did his best. If Jade truly thinks that she's going to be the main event of WrestleMania, I guess you have to make that decision. But, I mean, haven't you seen what WWE has done? Question. Question. Conrad, chat. Have, how have they handled Cody Rhodes? Like, I mean, let's just stop. We don't have to go too deep into this. Have they done? Co- Cody Rhodes just lost at WrestleMania. I still think that they're trying to tell a story with Cody. Now, would I have done it this way? No. But I do think Cody is still important. She said she talked to Cody before. Cody is the key. I'm telling you. You guys, losing Cody Rhodes, the moment that happened, I could, I, I could feel I could feel the doo-doo coming. Like, that, that's, that's all I can say to y'all. Like, I was like, oh, no. Y'all let somebody who had the keys to the kingdom. He may have not been the main one. He didn't have all the keys, but he had a lot of keys that opened a lot of doors. And now they all know. Hey, Cody, how's the water over there? It's warm. It's warm. You should get in. You should try it. Jay, come down here. It's bubbly. Ricky, you, you interested? Wardlow. We like muscle guys. That's why I think Jade's going to fit in. And with that breaking news that we're going to talk about, because I don't even know if you saw it, Sean. I sent it to you, but I don't know if you got a chance to look at it yet. Don't I, I, don't look at it because I want to surprise you on here then. My job has kicked my butt all day. I haven't seen a thing. That's fine. Uh, what about the Taylor Swift thing? I don't want to get that. Was, I, that was for optics, why they asked that question. I'll tell, Dude, you, this one press, thing, you, know, I'll tell you one thing that would be dope. What? If Rhea actually was interested in Jay in the storyline, that would be dope. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know that's not going to happen, but maybe, maybe one day. Do they have me laughing? It brought joy to me that these dudes were legit having fun. Uh, although Jay's past does scare me. <laughs> See, uh, bro, did you just quote Mike Jones? Who oh. Mike Jones? Oh. <laughs> um, if you are going to a press conference after a pay per view, then don't drink before. <laughs> They had three hours in between, Steve Kelly. I mean, what did you want them to do? They, he was probably he said he was chilling on Cody's bus. What do you think Cody's got on there? He he got everything he need on that they're not, bus. They're not drinking lemonade, that's for sure. For real. I really hope they don't drop the titles back to Sammy and KO. I did hear a theory on how that could happen too, because Sammy and KO were the most affected people by Jay Uso. And speaking of theory, what about Theory and his good Australian friend? Could be another team. I feel like they're putting them together. Uh, Cody and Jay will lose the titles on SmackDown to the business, but then Jimmy helps them win, and that's how you get the bro versus bro match, and Cody is locked in on SmackDown to chase Roman. That could be Triple H's announcement. That that's the We never heard who the trade was for uh, Jay Uso. Never. But that puts logic behind it because you had people from Raw on SmackDown just because. Don't get. I don't even want to get into it, and don't even make the corny excuses I hear on Twitter from randos. Don't get your well, shit all over again, bro. Well, they're challenging for the title, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Pro Wrestling Shoe says, "I think Cody's been handled just fine. He's selling more merch than anyone. He's billed as the top guy on every house show. He's the main star on Raw, all without getting the title just yet." Yeah, why not? I guess. I guess. Cody was the EVP and knows when the contracts come up, daddy. (laughs) WWE is the gateway to Hollywood, and that's what Jade wants. Ain't nobody that doesn't follow wrestling looking at AEW for new movie talent. Well, MJF's about to be in a movie, too. Just saying, it's coming out. Hey, swerve, why not drive? (laughs) Swerve. (laughs) I saw a lot of people using that song this week, too. Even at, like, high school cheerleading games, all that. Dude is electric, man. That dance is awesome. Shout out to Prince Nana. Prince Nana. Uh, that's my guy. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, yeah, I get it, what you're saying about WWE. Jay knew she couldn't go big in AEW. WWE makes her a superstar. Starks, Wardlow, MJF, I wouldn't be surprised if Malachi goes there. I'm going to tell you all this now. If MJF leaves, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it could be. It could crumble the AEW, honestly. It could be disastrous. And I think we're not, we haven't even gotten into AEW, but... I'll talk about it with the edge stuff, but you got to be careful too with the talent you're picking up. Mm-hmm. You don't want to see yourself in this WCW phase in like 1999 where it's like, it's Sid Vicious, the Macho Man Randy Savage, right. Hulk Hogan. What are we doing, bro? <laughs> These guys have been around for a minute. Right. But we'll see. We'll see. Moving along here, we did have. Uh, I don't know if they're called the Hurt Business, the Business, Lashley and the Street Profits versus 
Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar, and they had a mystery partner who came out at the end. Very weird to not have this person show up until an opportune moment to come out, but Carlito's back, and uh, Carlito looks better than he ever did before. Carlito is body guy Carlito now. <laughs> he uh, came in, and they ended up getting the quick victory. Yeah, I like Carlito. I hate his music. I mean, it's, it's, the it's, new music? Yeah, once again, a stupid decision to change the music. I don't know why, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Will said, put the tag titles on the Street Profits and stop bull driving around. Bull driving, I like it. Uh, he said, finish the story. Uh, if MJF leaves, AEW might be fully cooked. <laughs> Honestly, uh oh, uh oh, we got some, uh, we got someone uh, trolling in here. Hit the bricks. All right. Uh, Vinny says, hate the new music. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I miss, I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. I mean, Did why you would think? You change that, though. I don't understand what WWE is doing. Touch of stuff that doesn't need to be touched, bro. Um, let me ask you this. Did the Street Profits and Lashley losing here, does this hurt them? I feel like that's why they did, like, the surprise. Like, oh, we didn't see that coming. What? I mean, you had to, I mean, you had to let Carlino you know, win in his match, first match back. But if that's the case, don't book him against the Street Profits. Because, yes, it does. I don't care what the loss is. The loss hurts them. I'm sure they'll rebound. But now it's almost like you have to have. Bianca Belair join the team like it it's like you know because I hate to say they're getting stale already because the potential is through the roof but now there's another another person joining their team remind me to tell you that okay Okay. finish your point though Bianca has to join at this point they have to like their 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 potential is is monumental but now I'm almost like waiting with faint and breath to see okay well there has to be a fourth member Right, right. And it makes me wonder, too, if Dragon Lee will join the other side. Like, could this be their Survivor Series match if they get Dragon Lee? And then that leads credence to the rumor of who I heard would join them. Odyssey Jones. Remember, he was called up to the the main roster, and I believe he was like a free agent. But he's got a Mark Henry type look. He could be the muscle for them. Meanwhile, learning stuff while backing them up. You said the trick and, and Melo should join, but, you know. Uh, How long are we going to keep him in NXT for? My goodness. Uh, Next up, we did have uh, Solo and Jimmy versus John Cena and L.A. Knight. Yeah. Uh, I mean, John Cena. First of all, I don't know why John Cena is being so demonstrative with his moves. Like, like he was a little bit corny on on Saturday night. But the right team won. I mean, I'm I'm obviously a big Jimmy and, and Solo fan, but the right team won. At this point, you cannot have LA Knight lose at all. Like I don't, I don't think LA Knight's gonna lose for the next three months. Like I think LA Knight's gonna have be white hot going into the Royal Rumble, where he's gonna be the odds-on favorite. Sean, I have a fear for your boy LA Knight. I hope that they don't put him in that match with Roman at uh, Crown Jewel. I think it's AJ. Like if you're asking me to put money down, I'll say it's AJ Styles. But I, I do have a little. You can see them rumor, doing it. I heard, I heard the rumor about it would be Cena at, at Crown Jewel. And then Cena be. either rides off into the sunset. They haven't really given us an indication who it will be. Maybe we'll find out on SmackDown this week. Wait, wait when does he come back? The 14th? He comes back this Friday. Yeah, the 13th. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I'm thinking of a concert I got to go to on Saturday. I hear that. But, yeah. Social climber? You know how it goes, man. Thundercat, bro. Got to see him live. That's Not those Thundercats. I know I know we got some older 80s babies in the chat too. Not them Thundercats, but <laughs> Lionel. Sure at all. Uh this is something that was DM'd to me by my boy. Um yeah, shout out to Quills, man. Quilly said to me on the DMs, he was like, yo, how stupid is it they're calling it the the, the season premiere of SmackDown? Like, how stupid is that? First of all, it's October. New TV shows drop in September. And if this is the season premiere, then what was the season finale? Like, it's so stupid. WWE is so – WWE is always doing the most for no reason. For no reason. Speaking of the most, BJ gets on them about the music. He said, this Def Rebel in-house WWE music group absolutely sucks. If it's true, it's one half of CFOs and they hired the wrong one because I think the music has got – the music is the worst it's ever been. I think for this company, it's really bad. Um, 
let me see. I got a lot of people didn't see the pay-per-view. Carlito got that generic super human music now, too. Bro, everybody's got it. It's bad. With synthesis and fruity loops beat like everyone else. <laughs> Terrible. The business is outnumbered when you look at it, so they should have won the match. Uh getting jumped when uh Del Cruz and Del Toro get back. I heard the same about Cena Roman at Crown Jewel. Also, LA Knight's name was thrown into the mix, too. I hope they don't do that though. They said Jay leaving the bloodline was the number one moment in SmackDown history. Yeah, pump the brakes. Wow. Thundercats, yo. <laughs> the, the you know the singer Thundercat. Look him up if you haven't. All right. LA Knight. Yeah. yeah. You better buy Dragon Ball Do-Rag if he's selling them at that show. Love some Thundercat. See, BJ knows. BJ knows. But Cena and LA Knight got the win. Uh Cena did kind of say something about his performance in the match. Sean alluding to kind of what you were saying, like he took most of the heat in the match, and LA Knight got the hot tag. It was weird, but I mean, it felt like a house show match. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll never knock John Cena. I mean, I have knocked John Cena because I think John Cena is just like The Rock because he only came back because they were on strike, but I'll leave that alone. But he did stick around for two months. That's really cool. Like, he came back for two months. I think that he should challenge Roman Reigns for the title, and he should go out on his shield, and he should ride off into the sunset. Yep, yep. Um, I can see that happening. Uh, <laughs> Thundercat, how do I look in my do rag? I love it. I love it. Hey, um, <laughs> oh, here we go again. Charlotte with her 37,000 title shot. What are you talking about? She's got another one. She's well protected in this oh, feud. It's disgusting. Shh. Charlotte Flair. Um, Charlotte, EO, and Asuka had themselves a nice triple threat match here. Um, I, I enjoyed the match for what it was, but Sean, I can't help but say I was a little, a little smizzed here that they had Charlotte basically have the match won dead to rights, but with Bailey's interference and it helped EO retain the title, hit the nice moon salt out of the figure eight. How long are we gonna play this game until we give her the belt? <laughs> like we know, we know what this is leading to, right? Charlotte Flair. In her promos, oh, wrestling's fake. All oh, wrestling's predetermined. Yes, we know wrestling's predetermined. I never use the word fake. That's a disrespectful word. But when Charlotte gets out there on the microphone and says, "I'm Charlotte Flair. I get to skip line," that's the truth. That is the honest to God truth. And you guys better get ready because fifteen times is coming. And, and I, I might break my television. I swear. I mean, she makes me more angry than the Bloodline storyline. She makes me more mad. She makes me more angry than Jimmy turning on Jay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to have a baby face talking about how they get to cut the line and stuff it's like so that. It's so stupid. Like, are you, a, are you a face or are you a heel? Come on, bro. I think she should always be a heel, personally. They said Charlotte returning last year to win the title is the fourth biggest moment in SmackDown history. Please stop bringing these moments up, y'all. I mean, Me uh, you're a heel. You know why you're a heel? You have no hips. You're, you're a heel. Uh, I'm glad Charlotte lost. That I Yo, Tower of Doom spots are one of the things that, yo, there are certain things in wrestling I would ban if I ever had enough money to have a company on the main stage. Tower of Doom spots banned i would have my you better not i wouldn't do that if i were you because i do overrated move it means nothing the tower of doom the tower of doom spot is really corny i think it's corny because someone falls down after power bombing them it's the same thing where everyone gets crowded on the outside to catch someone too i just don't like those like it's too contrived like those things i would have removed and i would stop people from doing that dive between the ropes unless you're certain people who do it really good yeah EO retained the title. At least this one WWE got right. Can't yeah, be mad. Right until they give her a one on one shot and she wins it at Crown Jewel. Let's get to the main event, Sean. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Seth Rollins. In this feud, I think Nakamura has been presented well. He was given a lot of credit here. Um, I just don't like the setup. If that makes any sense, this is a last man standing match. Uh, last week, by the way, we had. Nakamura, <laughs> we had Nakamura counting. Sean, Sean, do I need one? Oh, okay, okay, I'm, I'm awake now. Two. I'm, yeah, I'm 
I'm up. Oh God, this last you were feeling this? Garbage. No, I wasn't feeling it because I knew what was gonna happen. Shinsuke should have won the freaking match. I'm sick of I've seen crap. a lot of guys come back from hurt back, Sean, to do what they had to do. Yeah, I don't believe it either. Um, at this point, this was the spot in the match where I was like, Nakamura better win this. <laughs> he hit him with a red mist and put him through a table. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm going to say this very tongue-in-cheek. I'm going on the record. Tongue-in-cheek, it's a joke. But seriously, though, Shinsuke did enough things to Seth Rollins to literally stop his heart from beating ever again. He beat the life out of Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins should be dead, according to what happened in that match. And somehow, like, what? Uh, uh, well, I might, don't, don't do that, because I like the music. I like the music. Yeah, I bet. Yo, who called me Bill Watts? Leech, take it easy, Rob. Take it uh, easy. Yo, you can't have these last man standing matches be so unrealistic, bro. Shinsuke beat the tar out of Seth Rollins. It was comical that Seth Rollins won this match. Comical. Seth Rollins, like literally, I mean, Shinsuke could have thrown him off the roof. And somehow at nine and a half, Seth would have got up. And then, and then Seth, and then after all that, Seth hits a falcon arrow through a table, and Shin can't get up. Like, are you kidding me? Like, come on, man, make it make sense, bro. Dawson says should have watched Collision. I don't know lie. about that. He's on the line. Uh, yeah, Seth Rollins falling on mattresses. Come on, bro. Collision, Collision had a tag title change too that opened up. So I forgot that it started at seven. I'm not full disclosure on how I watched this. Rob was on the phone with me, and he will tell you the truth. I said, what did AEW just do? Because I saw new tag team champions. What? <laughs> they got smoked, someone told me. Really? It was bad. Yeah, FTR got brutalized mm. and just whooped on. And Cash Cash never even got into the match, so that hurts. Uh, he no, said, is it true the first half hour of NXT is ad-free? That is true as of today. No, WWE is so petty. Oh, my God. Seth, Seth fell on a bed. I didn't see much of the match when I saw that clip. Yeah, they said, oh. that hard platform is Seth bounced up like a kid when you toss him down for a choke slam. He went, <laughs> I was cracking up. I thought that was funny. Oh. Uh, yeah, hurt backs and have <laughs> yo chill. chill wow! Yo, I had to catch myself before I read all of that. Crazy! They didn't give it to Charlotte, so I'm thankful. Look at that. Uh, let me see here. I honestly thought that Nakamura would have won the title due to the fact that this was a last man stand. Seth Rollins said, "My back is broken," and beat him. What? Do you, how? How am I supposed to feel seeing that? I, I I don't I don't like I, I like Seth Rollins, but I didn't know he was Superman. You never know. Uh CJ, you said you should DQ someone that got thrown over the top rope. Take all the mats up too. Quit calling me Bill Watts. Uh said the top rope moves is an instant disqualification. They man, they did. I used to watch that WCW. Don't let's not bring that up. Brian P- that was- Brian Pillman got rested. So Brian Pillman's going up to the middle rope. You know what that means? <laughs> Going in, Seth Rollins was very uh 2011 Cena esque. Yeah, AEW like is that. going over 10 minutes tomorrow night. Oh, so Tony Khan got an overtime now for his show. See, here we go. Here we go. It's gonna be an arms race. Oh. Collision had five people there, Conrad. Copeland didn't even run to the other side of the stage. Shinsuke should have won Seth Rollins spinal. I know what that's from. You better leave Mike Tyson alone, bro. <laughs> uh, I would have had Nakamura barely win, then have Priest cash in, then everyone goes so I'm happy, but I don't have the pen. <laughs> Tell him, Sean. Tell him. I said that Seth should have lost. Nakamura should have had his moment for about a minute and a half, and then Priest should have cashed in. I, I don't know why they didn't do it. McKinney, that sounds like a good idea. You know what that means. Byron, you know what that means, shirt? It's available right now. Uh, the Threadless link is actually uh, updated down there, so you guys can get them right away. Just one click away. Show love for the show. That's our signature phrase. 
Rollins has never hit as world champion to me, Vinny says. Woo. Really, Vinny? I like Vinny, but that's kind of a hot take. I didn't I think he's been a good world champion. Maybe not this time around, but like the people had some the people were really happy. Yeah, he's had some good well look, I like Seth in 2023. You don't. What? This the issue was I told listen, we'll stand on this. Seth Rollins as a performer is not bad to me. That is not my issue. My issue is the fluidity of the <laughs> gimmick. <laughs> What happened to all the other stuff and how did we get here is what I want answered. Well, but Monday, we can't Night answer Messiah, that. So Monday Night Messiah I didn't like for obvious reasons. But you get what I'm saying though. Like I saw how we got to there, but then I'm like, now how did we get to here? He's, and we, the, wait, I, I, I got a theory now. You ready? He was the Monday night. By the way, I'm very tongue in cheek about Monday Night Messiah for religious reasons, but I'll roll with it. He was the Monday Night Messiah, right? And then what did he become? Think about it. He was the Monday Night Messiah, and then he became the Drip God. You stretching this real hard, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you do that. This is like this is like some cool lunch meat right now. And I'm not going for it. It's so a listen. stretch. I admit it's a stretch, but that wasn't. You gotta admit that was pretty good. That was pretty good. He was the. He was you the. Can't even see that Messiah. cheese. You can't even see that cheese no more. He just tried to lay down. Bro, he was this. the Monday Night Messiah, and then he became the drip god. That's all I'm saying. Gomar <laughs> said, "I'm trying to figure out. Kyra's still trying to figure out what Seth is laughing at. It ain't nothing funny, Seth." <laughs> I don't get it. That gimmick. Derek thinks that gimmick sucks for Seth too. Derek's heard me talk about it, honestly, beforehand. Priest doesn't deserve the heavyweight title. Come on now, D. Hold Derek, on. Now. Derek not showing no love to the Judgment Day. Okay? okay. We'll get into that. But breaking news: we were talking about it before, and other people have alluded to it. Endeavor has handed creative control exclusively in the hands of Triple H. Shout to Sports Kita for the picture. You think? You think? Not brain surgery. Not brain surgery. <laughs> if you ask me, Sean, or probably anyone in this chat, yes. would you let Vince McMahon take back over? I wouldn't even. Vince McMahon wouldn't even be in the company if it was up to me. Endeavor's probably the only place I was like, sure, you could stay. No, but it'd be like he's gone. I don't even want him thinking he could talk to us. From a business perspective, and I know you're a businessman as well, Conrad. I would give Vince McMahon, and this is if I'm being real generous. And this is me stepping out of my disdain for the human being. But if you wanted to be nice, you can give him an honorary position. He'd have no power. He'd have no say. He could be the honorary chairman or honorary uh, whatever. It, it would be an honorary, but just like a similar to the way somebody gets an honorary doctorate when they go to speak at somebody, speak at college. He'd be an honorary whatever. He would not have – if you want to keep him around, he'd have an honorary position, nothing more, because you can't have that man making decisions. He clearly is not a good decision maker anymore. Yeah, it's a rat Rizzy, bro. You can't trust somebody doing that anymore. Uh, his laugh is so annoying when he said, eh, yeah, very true. Uh, backstory Battle League, what's good? What's good, bro? Uh, he said, let's go Triple H. Yep. Jocelyn said, still not watching. Well, you know what? To Jocelyn's point, and what we talked about this when we first started Clash of the Podcast, it was when Triple H took over the first time. It wasn't that great. Yeah. Yeah. There's been, a, there's been some people. We weren't giving out too many good grades for the people we brought back and how we treated them and handled them. I mean, damage control has been made and they're still made. And Cody was a Vince person. And come on now. Let's be real. Triple H ain't that much better. But you know what? A C compared to an F is an A. <laughs> uh, Derek says this might be a good look for Triple H. Triple H in full creative control is better than Vince McMahon. Triple I told H you. Triple H, good look was when he married Stephanie. That's why he's in the position he's in. Let's call it. Come on. Let, uh, let's, why can't we just say it out loud? We Triple can. But come on. You know, you know the six pack knows I'll ride this thing to death. I, don't get me started on the tear. I'm so, I'm so I'm sick to death. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on going here. Can I, can I have 30 seconds to re – I'm sick to death of this Triple H has earned it. Triple H has been a soldier. Triple H – no, no. Tri Triple H married the boss's daughter. Let's get it out of the way and let's be real about it. Now, I'm not knocking him. Hey, 
If I can marry the CEO's daughter, I'd do it too. But you know what? Let's stop giving Triple H all his credit for being a creative genius and a lifer in the business. Triple H married the boss's daughter. It's not brain surgery. Let's stop giving Triple H all these flowers. He deserves one flower. Here's one flower, Triple H. That's it. Not a bunch of flowers, not a bouquet of flowers. Triple H, you lucked up and married the boss's daughter. Let's call it what it is. I trust Triple H. At least he'll listen sometimes. We'll see about that. We'll have to see what's going on. Has he won 14? 14 yeah. world titles? Would he have won 14 world titles if he wasn't screwing the boss's daughter? Come no. on. Give me a no. break. Wake up. Uh, I saw Vinny put Roman Reigns has been greatly missed. He has. He has, especially on SmackDown. Uh, what's next for Rollins forming the new shield? Oh, I do not want to see a new shield. Um, no. No, I don't think they can do that right now. You, It's either the originals or none. Well, that's I'm not feeling it. Triple H is in full creative control now. Okay, let's see if the product will be better now. I'm not getting my hopes up. And and when it's bad, I hope y'all give him the same amount of trouble that you would give anyone else, right? Uh, <laughs> that is not true. I will not repeat that line that I just saw. Triple H marrying the boss's daughter was a good creative decision. Wow, Matt. Wow. <laughs> Yo, that's the move that Screams Endeavor is slowly pushing Vince out due to that uh, Fetty Gov ish. <laughs> Why did you write it like that? Sorry, that made me laugh. Yo, uh, no other reason for Vince to be pushed out, whether it be his alleged incidents outside the ring, whether it be questionable story writing, just for his mustache. Took him out of the business. Just, just Yo. for no other reason, if for no other reason, just Vince die. He, he'd be going around like this with it. I wonder how do they do that? Like, dude, I'm just saying, <laughs> if, if, for, if for no other reason, just kick him out of the business because of the mustache. That's all. Yeah, Gomez McMahon got to go, but he is going to keep his bread. He he know he knows what he did. Like, he forced everyone to do this. Like, I don't think y'all understand. Like, he wrote a letter saying, I will not sell. I will not listen to television deals until you all vote to bring me back. How you do that, I do not know, but... I guess that's legal. I'm still trying to look up, can you do something like that? But apparently you can. Uh, Triple H respects Roman's reign of terror. That's why he's booking it to you. Is Triple H really in charge this time? Lol. Ah! <laughs> I, <laughs> we'll see. Triple H is a master in the ring. Unpopular opinion. Triple H at Miz is the most complete superstar character-wise and wrestling-wise. Yeah. Why is that mustache the only thing the mister is talking about? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You guys are hilarious. Hilarious. Um, Let's get uh, into... I like how you look today. Uh, would you like to go out for a cream soda? Uh... <laughs> a cream soda. Let's talk about Damian Priest and Senor Money in the Bank. Sean, you brought this up as a topic. I'll let you uh, present the forefront for it. Yeah, man. I mean, Damian Priest is in a situation now where he's holding the most prestigious briefcase in the history of the business. He has a chance to be world champion. Um, it's almost a foregone conclusion that he's never going to challenge Roman Reigns, by the way, which is still an option. And unfortunately, you know what another option is? The Intercontinental, United States, and all the other titles, because they did say that it's a championship that you can cash in on any belt. But they haven't officially made the announcement that it's going back to the original format. I've only seen him look towards the World Heavyweight Championship, so let's hope that that means that that IC United States crap with Austin Theory over with and done. you got to pull the trigger soon. This is not 2005. He cannot hold it all the way till January, February of the following year. Last night was a perfect – Saturday night was a perfect opportunity. I, I just hope that – I just hope that they don't botch it because Damian Priest is someone that I think could win the World Heavyweight Championship. The problem with Roman Reigns and his reign, no pun intended, is because nobody in the industry other than Cody – or Jay, that's just me being wishful, to me has any business being in the ring with Roman Reigns. So Damian cashing in on Roman Reigns is almost, you might as well just wipe that out of your mind. So it has to be Seth Rollins. Cashing in on Seth Rollins with a bad back is not a bad idea. Unfortunately, WWE doesn't seem to think so yet. And I don't know what they're trying to accomplish. Maybe you, Conrad, or the chat can let me know what they... Holding on to the briefcase for this long 
it's not conducive to the fans continuing to be interested. I think when you get a first title reign for any type of championship, Sean, let's put this in AEW hands. Let's flip the roles real quick. Chris Jericho, first AEW champion. Could you imagine if Chris Jericho lost the belt in two, three weeks, a few months, whatever it may be? You kind of got to give them at least a really decent reign to show like this belt is credible. This yeah. is what everybody wants and this is why. And I think that's what they're trying to do with Seth. And they're also trying to protect Seth from the – I'm not number one. I am in the Macho Man Randy Savage role, boo boo face uh-huh. that can go on because you know. Listen, I've told y'all, and listen, you know, CM Punk's my boy. He was in the same role. He was in the exact same role at one point in time. Oh, you're not main eventing tonight. John Cena is, but you're facing Chris Jericho. You know, you're going to get the best wrestler to work with. What? But you're letting. The big show and John Laurinaitis main event with John Cena. You make, point, bro. you make a really good point. It's it's the it's to protect you because they're feeding you this stuff like you're gonna get this eventually. We're gonna do this with you, and eventually those promises don't get fulfilled, mm-hmm. and then you start to realize how come I can't do this? Like Punk asked when he came back, can I wear MMA shorts? And I have people who want to sponsor me for things. Can I do that? No, we will never allow that. Brock Lesnar shows up a couple months later, and he said he looked at the monitor and looked at him, and he just went, right. Wow, I couldn't do that, but he can. And that's when the issues start to portray themselves in here. It really does. That belt won't mean anything until it main events on the same show as Roman, in my opinion. Which it never yeah. will, which it never will, and I agree with you 100%, Vinny. It never will. If Roman's on the show, that title will never main event, and I agree with you. If you can get that belt in a main event slot that has Roman Reigns on the show, people will start taking it more seriously. But unfortunately, I don't see it happening. I also think that it devalues the mid-card titles because, to me, the World Heavyweight Championship starts feeling like how the Intercontinental Championship should feel. It's how the United States Championship should feel. But you can't do it because people just don't believe in it, and those belts are viewed as mid-card titles. It's a sad reality. So here is a Priest at a live house show. I don't know which show this is at, but he is still carrying around that briefcase. And this was moments before on the pay-per-view. He said he wanted to go out there, and they said no. Rhea has, looks like she has cemented herself as the leader kind of of Judgment Day. She said, it's not a good idea to do that tonight. Your knee is hurt. It's not worth the risk. Does he become champion when he cashes in, Sean? Yes. I think Damian Priest, I think, with, and I'm going to tell you why. I think there's one reason you could almost, because there's no guarantees, and WWE will always find a way to screw it up. There's almost a guarantee that he's going to win. You know why? Because of Austin Theory. That debacle that took place with that briefcase last year, it almost, can I say it? It almost ruined money in the bank. That debacle that took place with the way he used that briefcase almost ruined money in the bank. So you have to have him cash in successfully. You cannot have Damian Priest cash in unsuccessfully after what happened last year. You know what that's the victim of, too, though? This goes into what some of the release people were saying. Vince McMahon's vision had certain people moving on up. Then when Triple H got the pen, he pushed them back. Now they're like, did you forget about me? Like, what do you think of me then since you're in charge? But then Vince is back, and then they're like, am I still getting pushed? Vince... Doesn't remember anything. He's like, you're like a broken toy to him. I don't know. I'm doing whatever I want today. It's right. it's Monday and I'm ordering a steak for breakfast. Right. Like, who knows what he's, what's going to happen and what they're doing. So I felt bad for some of the people in those roles. How is Theory up here and then he's been moved and regulated like down? But they've given Theory a lot of roles where you have to be trusted. Same thing with uh, Grayson Waller. They've been in there with main event talent and I need you to deliver. And I thought, I think they've knocked it out the park, both of them. They have, but I mean, the sad part is with all that, even the 150 million click man, Austin Theory, how, what's it? I mean, I'm still not enthralled with him. I'm still not enthralled with Grayson Waller. I like Grayson Waller, but I don't love Grayson Waller. And with all the rub, to use his word, that he's been getting, you're not getting there yet. Like, it's like a slow build, and it's not a slow build in a good way. I. When I hear Grayson Waller's music, when I hear Austin Theory's music, I'm not, I'm not excited to see what's going to happen. That's a problem. That's a problem. It's true. Um, 
Steve Kelly says, Sean, you're right. I, I still predict Austin Theory will still be a world champion as long as he keeps everything, keeps his head screwed on straight. Right. McKinney says, I like what they're doing with the money in the bank briefcase because we get to see him watch and stalk Rollins until he picks his shot. I, but I definitely liked how Rhea took it from him to protect him and uh, stopped him from a botched cash. Oh, right. Oh, botched, he meant to say. I, I had the same typo the other day. <laughs> that's why I, that's why I caught it this time. Yeah. When you said I was like, I yeah. think I got what you meant. I think I got no, what you meant. I had the same exact typo the other day, man. Um, Derek said, boring. <laughs> what a hater of Priest, bro. Listen, Priest has what they want, though. He's tall. He's got muscles. He can do moves. He's big. He. Right. He's the prototype for what they want. The question is, once he gets it, how long is he going to keep it, though? Right. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of fans that want other people with that title, but we'll see. He said, "When's Otis getting his money in the bank back?" Uh, they gave it to Miz for uh, a cherry pick title run that he lost in two weeks. Grayson Waller effect with the bloodline that would be interesting. <laughs> Derek, making sure we know who he was talking about. Yeah, I was about to say, you definitely made sure you knew what we were talking about. Uh, I think the reason Damian Priest cashing in uh, wins is a reward for the way he handled the Bad Bunny match at Puerto Rico, plus he looks the part of a champion. Yeah, but I, does he do it with the Judgment Day is the real question. I don't know. You know what? Give us one on Raw for a change. Get Give us something on Raw for once. It doesn't always have to be a – P-O-E. That's what Miz Cash did, though, right? Yeah, Miz Cash did. I'm talking about. A, a, I'm talking about like a role with fans. Yeah, we don't. We don't count the pandemic era. Transition. <laughs> we, don't, we, don't <laughs> we don't count. Like I, to me, Drew McIntyre has never been world champion. Yo, I feel bad for Drew though, because Drew was over at that time. Like Drew had something, and then it just went. Hey, look, look. It's not our fault. That you won that Royal Rumble. I know Drew deserved it though. I, I really thought that was Drew's time, man, because he was over. And you know what? I know I know I'm being funny with you guys, but it's true. Like at the end of the day, Drew McIntyre, it was a bad situation, but it's like you can't just give it back just because the fans are back. That was his moment. 2020 was his moment. It just didn't work out. Matt Lopez says, I read online, Karen Cross needs a push. Yeah, push out the door. Dang. Wow, I'm losing. Wow. Rhea stopped Priest from cashing in. Why? Uh, Priest's knee got injured with the briefcase shot. Hold on, I'll pull up the picture. Earlier. So when he got smashed in the knee, that's what ended up costing him. By J.D. McDonough, who is trying to join, and it seems like he might take his spot. That's what I think. I think I'm glad you hit that right on the head. I think McDonough is going to join at Priest's expense. I wonder if they find a way to take the briefcase from him too, because that's always an option too. Now, mm-hmm. give the briefcase to someone who could actually win. the The issue with Reigns was the Money in the Bank briefcase became moot when there were when the titles were unified. You didn't need them anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was the crazy part with it. Uh, somebody said NXT WrestleMania. <laughs> Let me bring it up. They said NXT oh. WrestleMania 17. Yeah. This is crazy, so, bro. WWE is so petty. So on NXT tomorrow night, um, they say they're doing this because they have a TV rights deal coming up. Could be. Uh, AEW will also be on tomorrow night. We'll get into that uh, when we transition here. But we have Carmelo Hayes versus Braun Breaker. John Cena will be in Carmelo Hayes' corner. They're both the Boston guys from Boston. And you got Braun Breaker with uh, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's, the sides of his hair are gray now. We got to update that. I'm starting to think that that's a game, though. I think that's like a story. I think he grayed his hair on purpose. I, I I think that's because they're talking about it. If you notice, yeah, to to prove that, um, I think that the whole bloodline stuff is like getting to him finally. Because I, I would have thought the same thing, like, oh my god, he's getting really great. But when Michael Cole started talking about it, I was like, oh, they did that on purpose. Yeah, I think he's been dying it for a few years. Yeah. Cody has a big announcement. I'm going to predict that this announcement is. If you will, Daddy, the Dusty Classic coming back. And that's really lame if you brought Cody down there to just say the Dusty Classic is coming back. Really lame. Really lame. Um, 
I don't know. Do you have any other idea what it could be for Cody? Sean? No, it's it's nothing. He's gonna come down there with the tag belts. He's gonna. You know, what do you want to talk about? We're gonna talk about the Dusty Classic. Roxanne it's, it's Perez just to have him on the show, bro. This is the this is one of the most petty moves I've seen in a long time. It's not even like AEW did it on purpose. AEW has been preempted because of the MLB playoffs. And AEW is not trying to, to infringe on WWE territory. WWE is a free. They are so petty, bro. They are so petty. Listen, they're bringing the drama to them. If it makes both shows better, I'm with it. Do it. Fine. Think about it. NXT, you have John Cena. John freaking Cena. They might even bring out The Undertaker. The freaking I, I was Undertaker. getting to that. Dude, they got Oscar versus Roxanne Perez. That's going to be a great match, but are we going to have Oscar lose at the expense for ratings again? Yeah. Like. I just don't understand why we do it. And uh, a lot of people in the chat were bringing up, don't forget the Taker tease. Yep. <laughs> JD McFunko Pop. Wow. Leave that man alone, E. Leave that man alone. That's funny. Drew was about to be in a team called McRiddle. I'm so glad he's doing the work he's doing right now. Touché. You're right, DJ. Touché. Oh, my goodness. I still call him Jordan Devlin. Yeah, it's a rat, Rizzy. Taker tease. Dude, the Taker. If take, why did you need Undertaker? Come on, bro. It's just out of control. Like, if if I'm, like, I'm, you know what? I'm going to not watch. I'm going to not watch just out of the, the pettiness. Yo, Sean, Sean, please tell me you saw the trollers, though, on, like, Twitter putting up yes. the WrestleMania 17 yes. graphics with yes. people. It's ridiculous. It's like all of a sudden, oh, by the way, we'd like to announce a special guest ring announcer for tonight's match. The Heartbreak Kid. Oh, no, better yet, Heartbreak Kid is not even good enough because Shawn Michaels would come out like, obviously, he's Shawn Michaels, NXT Shawn Michaels. They might say guest ring announcer freaking Roman Reigns at this point. Like, it's out of control, man. Are you kidding me? Like, all, of sudden, all of a sudden, the NXT Tag Team Championship are going to be on the line in an open challenge. Oh, so <laughs> it's like Listen. what? Yo, M. Leezy said NXT WrestleMania first thirty minutes, no commercial. It's been stressful without Roman. I wouldn't have been surprised if he showed up, like in the parking lot in his car. What's up? Yeah, like you, pro wrestling shoot. We were talking about this earlier. If I'm WWE, I'm doing it too. L <laughs> I, I said the same thing. If I had WWE's resources, you said, "What do we do against AEW?" Okay, I got something for you. Two hours Conrad. before the show. Two hours before the show, right? Tomorrow night. Two hours before the show. WWE social media. Special announcement. The match between <laughs> the match between Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker will now be Hell in a Cell. Bro, Paul Heyman being there made so little sense until you get like Roman and Cena being announced. Why would he be there to be in Braun Breaker's corner? What? Yo, let me stop. Nah, he stopped dying because they got my boy stressed, I was saying. Um, NXT's the best show in WWE. Tokyo, the menace says. I'll tell you I what, don't know if that's tomorrow night is going to be the best show in WWE. WWE is really desperate with all the main roster stars going to NXT. This reeks of desperation and pettiness. This card doesn't even look that good if you will. <laughs> Stone Cold's going to be the timekeeper. I love it. I love it. Doug says oh. he's going to be the timekeeper. I love it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. goodness. Taylor Swift versus Beyonce is going to be on the card. It's ridiculous. It's like, you know, like, oh, my. It's, it's so stupid. Like, W, I mean, how petty can you be? Like, all of a sudden, Jade Cargill is going to pull up and it's going to be her debut match. Like, it's ridiculous, man. Like, wait a minute. Is that The Rock in the parking lot? The Rock. The Rock is in Orlando. Like, what? Yo, how petty uh, when AEW are trying to run on Tuesday. They backed off and gave them Wednesday. Now it's all hands on deck to a show. Y'all run to Tuesday. But that's not what happened, though, McKinney. Tony Khan and them don't control the night they get put on. They don't, See, right? It's not. It's not a. It's not a ploy on AEW's part. It's the MLB playoffs. That's all it is. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you get bumped. Oh, NBA playoffs, you get bumped. 
they trust me, AEW doesn't like getting bumped. They hate that because they're going to lose some of their audience just because there's going to be someone not like you and me who watch every week. They're going to ch- go by and like, oh, I thought wrestling was on tonight. Baseball's on. I guess I'll watch that instead. You know what I mean? Like they'll just be like, oh, no wrestling this week, I guess. And and, w- and somebody in WWE sitting at home or sitting in the in the office and like all of a sudden they're like, NXT's on Tuesday. Oh, hell no. NXT's on Tuesday. Oh, watch this. Paul. John, Oscar, Co- uh, think about it, bro. Think about it. Cody Rhodes is going to make a special announcement on NXT. For what? Why? Why? And by the way, I promise you, guarantee, I like to bring out my tag team championship partner. Oh, we said he came and take her on NXT. One more time. <laughs> oh, Jay Cargill will arrive at NXT and have a face-off with Becky. Ooh, interesting. Why was Trick Williams' title reign so short? I couldn't tell you. Unless they're both getting called up? I don't know. Yeah. I like it. (laughs) Yeet. (laughs) (laughs) We need to have this uh, much energy when AEW keeps running the same time as Impact pay-per-views. Hey. I mean, wait. Isn't that when, well, imp, here's the problem with Impact. Impact has to move. So, like, if WWE was like, yeah, we're moving NXT to Thursdays, Impact needs to go to a different day completely. 100%. Man. Yeah, they got they have to avoid them. Even with their pay-per-views, they started doing Friday pay-per-views sometimes. And I'm like, I'm not mad at it. I get it. Like, they're going to have to keep bouncing around. Um, It's just a sad part of the game, unfortunately, with this. It's NXT versus Edge, so they teach Edge a lesson. <laughs> what? Hub, you want The Rock to show up at NXT in the parking lot with the chances he gets jumped? I, I do. I do. I want to see his butt get kicked in the parking lot. I love it. I love it. Get out of here, Rock. Dwayne. NXT's getting everything the Saudi Prince wanted. Yoko's versus Goldberg in the main event. Oh I'm done. Uh, honestly, though, how, how AEW is going, I think NXT would beat them without the main roster appearances. They might. Just, just announced for NXT. Roman Reigns conducts tribal court too. Like what? Like what? See, all of a sudden, like all oh, the whole bloodline is out on NXT on Tuesday. Uh, let's be real. Zero casuals watch AEW. They know when that's on. I mean, I listen. Somebody they did. They lost two hundred thousand people last week. Supposedly, like where did they all go? All these people just didn't disappear. I don't think everyone's a CM Punk fan. Where are they? Oh, by the way, CM Punk's debuting tomorrow night on, on NXT. <laughs> we are nice. <laughs> what? What? What a way to start Why are Conrad crying looking at the screen? <laughs> no, man. What, what a way to start off NXT. What a surprise. We have told Roman you here every Tuesday. BJ said, have Roman beat down Cody in the parking lot. Roman came because he knew NXT's parking lot is the most dangerous place in professional wrestling. Yeah. Rock ain't getting beat up in the parking lot says his uh, track pants days. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you bring up your uh, you bring your tail to Tuesday, I'm going to make your fans not watch. They didn't pick, though. It wasn't them. That wasn't them. It wasn't AEW's choice. Yeah, and they can't go to Saturdays because they'd be like, well, why would we have Collision and this on at the same time? That, that's what makes it so petty on WWE's part. WWE knows that AEW is not making a power play for Tuesdays. They, they've been bumped to Tuesdays because of the MLB playoffs. This is so stupid. AEW straight losing all of their fans, bro. Casey, tons of others on Twitter have been complaining. Trick Williams lost the title because WWE treated him as a filler for taking Mustafa Ali's spot due to him being released, which made no sense. If that was the case, Dominic should have just retained. Roman showing up on NXT is going to happen via satellite. I thought last week's Dynamite was one of the best uh, I've seen in a long minute. Well, let's transition into that. Um, You want to talk about Edge and AEW's role since picking up Edge and he became All Elite. Um... Excuse me, what'd you call him? Adam Copeland. <laughs> you know, let's let's be respectful. Let's be respectful. It's not his name is not Edge. I don't know who Edge is. Edge is Edge is no longer a competitor. It's Adam Copeland. All right, same music, same face, same body, same energy. It is not bro. Edge. He has always been Edge. I can't. I, it's gonna take me a long time to get used to that. I don't know anybody on the AEW roster named Edge. 
<laughs> I just I don't know anybody on that roster name. I know Adam Copeland. He's the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. That's that's who he is. I'm Cole, taking my one. You know, come on, man. My mama is his, if his mama calls him Clay, I'm gonna call him Clay. That's that's <laughs> <laughs> you brought this up, John. What, so what, what do you think? Now, you said AEW can't botch this is what oh, you specifically boy. told oh, me. So boy. let's get into yeah. this a little deeply here. Like, like, let's talk about the AEW problems real quick, and then we'll get on out of here. Like, what's what's up with AEW, man? Well, AEW did the right thing at Wrestle War, Wrestle Dream, because they had to bring out – I've always said AEW is still in the embryonic stages of its growth which means that they have to have big splashes at their pay-per-views. And I think they were very successful. I think bringing out Edge was a smart move. But now you have to make sure that you don't botch this. And what I mean by that is you have to put them in meaningful storylines that make sense. Him going one-on-one with Christian and obviously going through the gauntlet of Christian's people does make sense. I'm happy with where it's at right now. He's going to run through Luchasaurus. He's going to run through the other kid that just turned on Darby Allen. I'm cool with that. But then I don't but I don't want to see I want to see Edge versus Christian for the TNT championship. I don't want to see Edge teaming up with Darby Allen to face Christian and Luchasaurus. I don't want to keep it straight. Keep I do I do think you're gonna you might get that match, but right. I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. No, you might not. Because listen, Darby's out. Hold on for anyone who believes in kayfabe. I'm gonna give you five seconds to get off of here. Mm-hmm. All right, you had your time. If, you, if you're still listening, this is your fault at this point. Darby Allen is going to climb Mount Everest, mm-hmm. or attempt to, I should say. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be gone for a minute anyway. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if we're ever going to get that match unless they have Edge team with Sting. Right. Which is a tag match, which I, I'm okay with that, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Or is, I is Sting not hanging around? Is he just like, I'll, I'll follow you to climb Mount Everest? Sting in the car, like. Uh, uh-uh, I'm good right here. You no, keep climbing, buddy. The thing, about, the thing about Adam Copeland is that he is a recognizable name, right? And that's what it's all about. AEW is doing what WCW did back in the day, but they can't do it the way WCW did it back in the day. They brought in big names. They overutilize them. They drain them out. AEW has to make sure Adam Copeland does not lose steam. I want to see Adam Copeland in meaningful matches. He should not be wrestling every week, but he should be on television every week. And I'm going to be real with you. Adam Copeland, the end goal should be Adam Copeland versus MJF. Adam Copeland should be in the world championship picture. There's nothing wrong with speeding that up because in edges in Adam Copeland's mind, in our mind's eye of what we know Adam Copeland to be, he's a world championship competitor. We don't need to see him going up against anybody but Christian, or MJF. Interesting. I definitely can see the Christian match happening. MJF's on this weird trajectory that I don't know where it's going because they kind of turned him babyface on a whim. So I'm like, uh, this is weird. But I still don't trust the babyface turn for him and Cole either. Like, I look at both of them sideways. It's like the uh, Ultimate Warrior, Ric Flair, Macho Man saga. Some of you guys might be too young to remember that, but someone's heel out of these two, and I was looking at them both, and I'm like, who is it? And then it turned out it was neither, but it, it makes you wonder. And then you still have this this mask storyline with the, the mask and who beat up uh, Jay White, and what are we doing here with that? I mean, um, and it's, fairly, it's fairly doable and seeable that it, it's going to be Adam Cole, who was the guy behind the mask, but my question is, if it's not Adam Cole... It better be some. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, about big splashes, Conrad. I, in my mind, and you tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think that you can have that mask reveal be anybody but somebody in a blockbuster situation. It better be Adam Cole or it better be somebody really, really important. Because it, it better not be MJF because I'll just turn the TV off. If it turns out it was just MJF and he's just going to go back to being the devil again, like, that would be stupid, right? You would think, but he's still been playing the character up. But I, it's kind of like when they – who's carded Rikishi Steel? Was it Triple H's? It's too obvious to be him. So you really don't want to go with him, even though they had to do what they had to do for that situation. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they do in that situation. I, I, have, a, I have a crazy theory in mind, but I won't – I'll save it. Well, should I bring it up? I don't know if they would do this, but what if it was Dr. Britt Baker? 
instead of Adam Cole. I have no problem with that, but my question would be to you, then who is she feuding with? Where's the heat? But she did it on behalf of Cole behalf of because that. they don't like you, you get it? Like, then you can get right back into the situation. That's kind of lame, too, if that's the excellent. You're, you're playing with fire. Like you said, this has to deliver. And this, to me, could be one of the things with AEW. And, chat, please sound off what you think the AEW issues are because I do kind of want to get into this. Because a uh, big shout-out to my friend, Mr. Warren Hayes. Uh, Warren, I was listening to one of his podcasts yesterday. I just had it on while I was, like, doing graphics and things like that. And he brought up a great point about the tickets. Sean. Mm-hmm. You had Grand Slam in your area, and I saw tickets were buy one, get one. If the ticket prices were too high, wouldn't people jump on those prices? Like, oh, I'll pay $20 and get two tickets. Why not? I would think so. They aren't doing that. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong here, and I don't know what's wrong. Is it all CM Punk? It can't just be CM Punk. It's got to be. There's got to be more to it than that. Would you consider me to be... Very silly question I'd like you to indulge. Would you consider me to be a wrestling fan? Yeah. And would you consider me to be someone who would be in attendance for something that excites me as it pertains to wrestling? Yes. I had no interest in going to Grand Slam. No. I watched but it on why? television. That's what I'm saying. I watched it on television because you have to have something to draw me in to make me to get there's a there's a many factors. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. There are many factors as it relates to going to an event live. You have to buy the ticket. You have to drive, take the train, take a cab, take an Uber. You have to get there. You have to sit down. You have to worry about getting back home. It has to be something that's worth it. Grand Slam was a good show, but it wasn't a show to me that would make it conducive to me wanting to buy a ticket to be there. There have been shows in AEW history where I was like, I need to be there. I wish I, but I mean, the show was in Vegas, the show was in Des Moines, I, wherever it was. At the end of the day, though, to answer your question, I don't think AEW has been putting forth show. Even even Wrestle Dream to me wasn't a blockbuster show. It had a blockbuster ending. I mean, let's 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 be real here for all of you who come in here every single week and listen. Sean was not enamored with All In's car. Me and Sean agreed at one point on what it needed to be, but. I also here's where I gave them a break and Sean didn't. Tony Khan isn't going to be able to change that card oh, for whatever the reason was. I know he's doing like contracts and all this other BS. It, but to me, this is also what led to the problem with Punk afterwards. Tony should have said, yo, this is what we're doing. This is what we need to do. And I think that's what Sean expected him to do versus what we got. And I'm like, listen, I'm going to give you the break, bro, because I get you're trying to resign people on their side and the elite are kind of doing the click thing, like we're all together. It's a one package deal. You talk to all of us at the same time. You don't just talk to one of us. Right. I get that. And it's kind of weird to have members of management doing that with talent. Does that make sense? Like you're friends with the talent. And and you know the leverage that you have too. It's weird. So you're you're looking at that. You didn't want to give them a break for that. I'm mad at people for saying All Out was a good show. All Out was not built well at all. It, it was it, it was not good. They had a few good matches on there, but Tony Khan saying, like, this is the best four-string run of pay-per-views we've ever had. Stop. Not stop true. right now. Just stop it. Because you're nothing is reflecting that. And I'm an AEW fan. I want AEW to succeed. I cover AEW every Wednesday. I think I have missed very few shows of it. And I didn't do a Wrestle Dream review. And if they're going to more pay-per-views, I'm going to miss more pay-per-views. You're going to have to wait until Clash to get what we thought about the shows. I'm sorry. That's what it's going to be. I can't do all of this. And they're trying to expand and tell me that they're doing great, but I don't see it right now. I don't, I don't see, see the positive movement. I, I, it's, it's concerning because I don't think anybody's seeing it. I think AEW, for whatever reason, has fallen into a little bit of complacency. And that's a problem because this is, these, they should be as hungry as they've ever been. You have to. You can't lose that hunger for, for what you're doing. I want to read some of these comments in here because we got some interesting things p- popping up in here. Tokyo the Menace says, AEW, too many dream matches instead of storylines. Mm. Agree or disagree, Sean? I agree. There was nothing behind um, – well, awesome. excuse me. Nothing behind um, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Daniel Bryan except the fact that they were two of the greatest technical wrestlers. I think that f- I think that people use Dream Match too loosely today as well. Yeah, dream sure. Match is Hulk Hogan versus The Rock is a Dream Match. 
Stone Cold versus Hollywood Hogan would be a dream match if it ever happened. Those are dream matches. Is Brian Danielson and Zack Saber Jr.? I mean, I guess you could argue it if you love technical wrestling. Sure, I don't mind saying that. But some of the matches people are saying are dream matches. I don't see it that way. And I, I think you're right. I think they are overusing that word and and that term. And it's it's and it. You know what it does? It sets you up. <laughs> it sets you up for failure. Just like saying this is going to be the greatest professional wrestling event in the history of professional wrestling. And then you put on a good show. But you know what? You're disappointed because it didn't live up to that. You saying that this is a dream match. It better be Hogan and Andre because if it's not, that's a problem. Let's go to McKinney here. In my bad news, Barrett voice, AEW, I've got some bad news for you. Adam Copeland isn't a needle mover like they thought because that crowd told it all. I could be wrong, and this next show might sell. I don't know. That that show, it only got 800K, and I know they're saying, like, oh, the DVRs were messed up and things like that, but... Adam Copeland is not a needle mover the way he was a needle. He would have been a needle mover 10 years ago. We all know we're getting him in the twilight of his career. I think it's a good signing, but I said they just can't blow it. They can't blow it. All this dream match versus story stuff is straight WWE brain, he says. Uh, agreed, Adam Copeland should be world champion uh, in the world champion picture. I feel his match with Christian won't be for the TNT title because I think Christian's dropping it to Brian Danielson. And I'd like we that. Could, I like Danielson too. Uh, Cody could announce Pillman Jr. <laughs> he could. Oh, yeah. uh, Rob, we're, Rob, when I see we're fighting automatically. Uh, oh, I don't care if it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking during the pay per view, and they he said, "If that, what if Chavo comes back for the match to help Ray out?" And I said, "If I hear Ooh Chavo, you are done the next time I see you." Like Taz mission automatically. Don't even ask what happened to you. <laughs> Why did you do it? Done. Um, someone said, I think it's Jungle Boy behind the mask. If it's Jungle Boy, I will turn that TV off. I'm not even joking. I will be very upset with that. Uh, okay, people are getting to the trick, Williams. I'm trying to find the Edge stuff, guys. Or Adam Copeland, excuse me. Who's to say Adam Copeland isn't the one behind the devil mask? He is the ultimate opportunist. Okay, I'm leaving the rated R TNT title on Adam Copeland, that it could do something. If you got a couple minutes, I'll make some quick bullet points as to an overview of things I think they should improve on or what they have an issue with in general. BJ, I'm going to try and get to your points here real quick. He says AEW isn't advertising locally the way they should. I don't agree with that. Sean, didn't you see? I see AEW ads on WWE when they come. And AEW was all over every billboard in the city that week. So, Yeah. I don't agree with that. AW is charging more for tickets up front than lowering the price before the show. People got upset by that or don't see the price drop. But people are going to WWE for the same prices. Mm -hmm. um, let me see here. AEW doesn't let things breathe. It only stays to catering. I've always said that about not letting things breathe. It only stays catering to the dedicated fans so they don't gain casuals. I agree with that. AEW needs a streaming deal. No way for new fans to go back and start, and the pay per views are becoming too often for too much. Yeah, people can't keep paying the 50. Okay. Uh, I do agree with E2, though, with the whole like when people say AEW doesn't have storylines, do you agree with that, Sean, or do you disagree? I, I don't agree with that fully with some oh, of the they things. They have storylines, they don't have enough storylines. I think that there's far too much of impromptu matches in AEW. How do you feel about the Ring of Honor integration? I think the Ring of, uh, Ring of Honor integration is cool, but I also think that the Ring of Honor integration is somewhat watering down the product as well. They should, you know, the fact that they had so much Ring of Honor influence on All Out, like we were talking about, made the show downgrade a little bit. Let me see. Was that it for BJ's points? I think so. AW puts on better and more entertaining matches week after week over every other company, yet I never see them making much of a reach outside of their dedicated fans. Uh-oh, and he said one last thing, though. Waiting with, wait with bated breath, BJ. Let's see here. <laughs> Derek said ah. it better not be jungle. Wow. Wow, Derek. Wow. Tell us how you really feel, Derek. 
B-Boy Skyline thinks we're getting MJF Omega in 25 days. I did see the BTE skit today with that. Where did you did you happen to see that online? I did. We'll see. That's one of the matches that I'm like. So some of the matches they kind of have avoided doing as well. Why haven't we seen MJF and Kenny Omega yet, or MJF and a partner versus the Bucks? Like, there's some matches that haven't happened, and people be like, "That hasn't happened yet." I'm like, "Nope." It's weird. Don't get me started with the the Punk fumbling of the bags. We had Punk wrestling some people that you were like, "What?" Yeah. And we didn't get this match. Yeah, it's crazy. It made no sense. They dropped the bag on a couple of them. Ooh, like Triple H said in 2013, Edge oh, was never man. a draw. I saw people post that. That was harsh. Was. And, and you know what? Let me say this real quick, too. To all the people giving Edge garbage, too, like, it's not Edge's fault. What, what I think happened was, Sean, Triple H and Vince and them have their direction now. They're going with these younger guys. This is who they're going to work with. And what ends up happening? Oh, no, Edge, we don't have anything for you that's going to be good. Unless Edge is going to be all right with being, like, the second match on the pay-per-views and stuff. I mean, okay, sure, we can do that. Less money, because I'm not going to pay you for doing that as much. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of forced them out. Right. I agree. I mean, but I thought they had momentum going when Edge came back initially. I thought Edge, you know, world championship at Money in the Bank, world championship at WrestleMania, he could have easily won one of those matches. I mean, obviously, Roman Reigns won his iconic run, but at the time... Roman was only about a year into his reign when when they faced when he faced off with Edge. BJ says, "I think that the negative attention AEW gets is finally catching up to them. It was doing good for them in online attention. Now I think it's reaching into their actual market. Hmm. Um, that could be a point. So I don't know if I've ever shared this on here, but I've shared it on the Dynamite streams. BJ one time told me that engagement for AEW is up." Was it 400% BJ? I can't remember. It was a crazy astronomical number. Like when it's something negative, it goes up 400%. Okay. Punk fighting with the elite, up. Uh, Punk had this to say, up. Okay. Anything that was negative to their brand, it would go up. And it's not just that. It was like Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa, all that negative stuff. And this was from someone on Reddit. Two hundred. Oh, thank you, BJ. I'm, I'm tripping. 200% is still a lot, though, from a business aspect. Oh, like, so your engagement is up that much more mm-hmm. when negative stuff happens, but not when anything good, not when you have a great match. It's just that. It's weird. It's weird. Anything negative has more reach and reaction. Controversy creates cash. But they I, maybe that's where you're saying TK failed. Like, maybe he didn't capitalize on doing that. Um, let's go back into others' comments here. Uh, AW is doing TI. I don't know if that was supposed to be something else and you didn't finish it. Oh, it's doing things too fast. There it is. There's the makeup for it. Pro Wrestler Shoot says, they got storylines for a week before the pay-per-view. I'm shocked Full Gear is getting an actual build. Yeah, I hope, yeah, they, maybe. hope they pull through with that. I agree, PW shizzle. Yeah. They, they have to do better with some of those. But some of the stuff, too, is so subtle, people don't notice. Like, the Kenny – I was telling people when Kenny Omega and Hangman were in, the like, the tag titles and all that stuff, I'm like, this is a storyline. You guys don't see it that eventually Kenny's going to be the champ. Hangman and him are going to finally have the big battle. Like, they were setting it up, and people were like, that's not a storyline. I'm like, it is. It is a story, though. Like, watch. Keep watching what they're going to do. Um. I think people are tired of defending even though they don't need to. I mean, that's on them. Mm -hmm. That's on them. Tomorrow, AEW's event has just shy over 2K Pro Wrestling Shoe says that's uh, impact level tickets sold. I won't comment. I've been to uh, indies with bigger crowds than that. Oh, boy. (laughs) Sean, you're in the room with Tony Khan, bro. He says, "You're yo, Sean, you're my right-hand man now. I brought you in, bro. What what do I need to do? Two-month bills versus MJF. Uh, edge, edge, make, you know, make sure. That- I had a bad visual of Sean grabbing him by his, like, suit jacket. Be a boss! <laughs> well, I mean, if you're talking about, I thought you were talking about storylines. As far as, like, the way you're running the business, uh, it be, not, not just be a boss, be a man. Be a man and stop letting these people run you like like you're there, like you work for them. You you have to stand on your own too and and just chop down some of this stuff. Let me ask you this crazy question for the chat and everybody too for this one. Do you reach back out to CM Punk if yep. you think that this is an issue? You would call him back if you're Tony Khan and be like, yo, yeah. listen. I'm calling it right now. 
if WWE signs MJF and or Edge, AEW will go out of business. There will be no coming back from that. Wow. That's that's a tough reality to face. AEW yeah. cannot, AEW cannot survive the buzz that would be created by MJF and or CM Punk going to WWE. AEW should be doing everything in its power to even sign MJF before he goes on the market, even though MJF probably won't do that. And MJ and, and Tony Khan should be on the phone with CM Punk. Listen, whatever it is, let's work it out. Because MJF and CM Punk are the franchise. The the numbers don't lie. There's something there. Um Edge's next few would have been cross. <laughs> Glad he left. Somebody said, oh, wow. That's what, I know it sounds funny. Tokyo's kind of being tongue in cheek, but that's true. I mean, yeah. it would have been carrying cross. It would have been all of a sudden like Edge versus one half of the Viking Raiders. Like it would have been ridiculous. BJ says, I also think a worldwide market changes things. For example, how many non-English foreigners comments do you see about uh, John Cena or something else hyping it up? You don't have that with AEW. Hold on, I'm going back. Most of AEW comments are comments spam is all too smarky or all WWE trolls with reactions and comments. Hubs, my dude, the fact, uh, say it with your chest, TK, <laughs> say it with your chest. It is a fact, Mo. It's like, I mean... They've it. AEW needs to build new stars. When WCW was taking talent, WWE built up Austin, Rock, Triple H. Why wasn't MJF and Starks the first true company uh, rival? And speaking of Starks, thanks for bringing that up, Ransom. Uh, speaking of Starks, what's he been doing over the last couple weeks? Winning tag titles and taking L's. Wasn't Starks on the verge of being like a main event star? CM Punk and him were fighting on we on TV every week. Ricky the Dragon. It seems like it seems like Punk was trying to pull him up. Yeah, and it seems like a million years ago now, even though it was like two months ago. That's the problem. That's the problem right there. Starks was on the verge of being a superstar, and now we can't even remember. Like, was he on the show last week? Yeah, he was on. Well, he was on Collision. He was on Collision. Okay, all right. Yeah, and that soft. Well, we'll get into that. Collision doesn't feel the same either without Punk running it. It feels worse. It feels like dynamite light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also, my examples weren't to be in a negative light. I'm just saying an NXT post while being flooded with the hype, but not AEW. Yeah, Punk shouldn't have been fired, and TK shouldn't have shouldn't have made the elite apologize and work with him. Uh, I'm happy for Copeland. Hope he stays safe. Mercedes Monet will bring up AEW ratings. Maybe. Maybe she'll give him a slight boost, but for how long? We'll have to see. Right. And how long before she's getting aggravated with this? It makes you wonder. Because, listen, Punk going back to WWE, I'll admit it, that's hypocritical. But where else is he going to go? See that Punk back? He's backed into a corner right now. I don't know if you've ever seen Ninja Turtles when the rat leaped up and bit Oroku Saki, but that's where he's at right now. You're going to bite or what, bro? Or get your ear sliced off. Shout out to Ninja Turtles. But that's what I'm saying. Like, what do what do you do here though in this situation? I don't I don't know if you're punk. He can't go to Impact because Impact's gonna have to ask their parent company to open up the checkbook. Are they willing to do that? Can you do that? And is it worth five mil? Do you think people are all gonna just tune in for that? I mean, that would be crazy, but is MLW, is NWA, does he go to the indies? Can they afford him? He, it's, AEW, it's AEW or WWE or nothing. And if Tony fired him, where is he going to go? And does he want his career to end like that? Or does he want to have say in how it ends? And I'm I just saying. He wants on his own terms. I think that's the reason why he will be in. The, he might be there as quickly as, as Survivor Series. It's in Chicago. And I, and I hate to be that guy. It's in Chicago, so he'll probably show up in Chicago. But you know what? It Crazier things. There you go. Crazy things have happened. Crazier things have happened. Never say never. Uh, some are saying Monet has cooled down. Punk was fired for cause and TK pissing in his under rules. It ain't happening. <laughs> CJ, I'm just saying. He said TK. Well, he did say he feared for his life. He feared for his life. That's a bit much. Uh, Punk needs to stay retired from wrestling, Tokyo says. Uh -huh. The rate and say otherwise, my friend. I'm just letting you know. 
Uroku Saki, my dude, the foot is going to be after you for speaking his legal name. Uh, I was thinking that scene where the dude like puts his hand out, mm-hmm. and then April O'Neil, like I was like, oh god, never look at the hand, bro, never watch it. Cage Man says AEW's doing nines. That's Black Cloud has lifted. The Bucks did their ring laps already. Yeah, that's yo. And can I say this? And this is not a Adam Copeland joke. There's a lot of copium being smoked by the wrestling community right now with this. AEW's putting on the best shows I've ever seen. 9.52. Cage match says it. Look at Sean. Is Sean saying it? Is Pro Wrestling Shoot saying it? These these guys have been watching AEW for a minute. I've been watching since the beginning. It something ain't connected. Something there are clicking. certain people. Get into it, Sean. You look like you want to say something. Go no, ahead. Something, something clicking. It's just like it's it's just like when you know you know. It, it the the it's not congealing. It's not coming together the way it should. That's all I was going to say. Someone said you like the Cole and Strong story. What do you think? I I think it's funny. I think this is the best work of Roderick Strong's career. It's okay though. It's 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 okay. It's funny, but it's You're like about character wise. This dude yeah, has yeah. never had a character. He was always it, playing. But it's a waste of time though. What's what's it gonna lead to? It's gonna lead to nothing. It's giving him a character though. I like hear you. This, is, I hear you. this is what he's always needed though. He can't just be Ring of Honor dude. I can wrestle. Like, it, no, no more of that. No more I'm the Undisputed Era's, like, technician guy. Now he's Adam, and he gets to act a fool with his friends. So if they can capitalize on this, it'll be good. <laughs> Anthem is cheap AF. Where's the impact game? All right, all right, E. They tried to get that for freehand. Bro, I want Punk to have a good end to his career. He was straight up set up. Um, if I was Punk, I would go back to WWE. Punk is petty as well. He, he might, yeah, That's he fair. might just do it just to. Here's what you missed out on. See ya. Uh, I hope he goes to WWE. A lot of people are saying troll life is mad real. Don't get it twisted, Sean. Troll life is mad real. Don't, I'm just saying, don't get it twisted, Sean. Me and Derek will be live tomorrow for Dynamite Review. You got anything coming up this week? Nothing coming up this week, but I'm really excited to announce that on the week before Survivor, or well, the week before Thanksgiving, excuse me, November 16th, I'm going to be having something called the Survivor Series Special. We're going to go back and look at the most historically significant storylines in the history of the Survivor Series. We know there's a lot. Andre winning the first ever uh, Survivor Series match over Hogan's team. Obviously, Brett versus HBK in 97. Stone Cold throwing Triple H off of a forklift in 2000. There's so much cool stuff to talk about. Um, and it's going to be a really fun show. So mark it down on your calendars and click over on Hubbard Wrestling Weekly and subscribe to get ready for the Survivor Series special, November 16th on the Hubbard Wrestling Weekly channel. And don't forget next week, special start time. Tell them, Sean. Special start time, 7.05 Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a show that is going to be just as action-packed and just as fun. We're just starting one hour later for one week only. We're keeping the streak going. We, we're doing this for you guys. We, we were thinking about shutting it down for the week, but um, but we decided that we didn't want to do that. We want to keep the streak going. Episode 59 will go through without a hitch. We'll just be going live at 7.05 instead of 6.05, and that's one week only. Shout out to Derek in the chat yelling, Adam! Adam! <laughs> MJF and Cole funnier than Strong and Cole. Uh, depends on... See, that's com- comedy is weird, bro, because I could tell someone, like, I love Bernie Mac, but I know people who'd be like, I don't get it. But then someone will... I'll pull up some comedian that you've never heard of from Facebook, and I'll be laughing at it. As it's, I'll play it for, like, Sean, and Sean be like, I don't get it, bro. I don't... What's so funny about this? It, Humor is depending. I'm a sick individual, so I'll laugh at some messed up. Like, why did you say that? Like, that's crazy, bro. I'll bottom laugh line, at it. Bottom line is, uh, humor is up to interpretation as well. Just like pro wrestling, guys. And yes, keep sir. that in mind. Join me and Derek tomorrow as we do Title Tuesday and come in with your NXT opinions as we get to enjoy pro wrestling, be fans, enjoy competition. This is why WWE is doing better because there's competition. Don't let them fool you and think, we're just doing this for our television show. Yeah, right. This is Clash of the Podcast. I'm Conrad with Everything Pro Wrestling. He's Sean Hubbard of Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, and we are out. Catch you guys next week. 705, one week only. 705, one week only. Next week.